What is going on guys? My name is Taffy Taft. Welcome to another PC build. It seems to be a yearly thing. Right about this time I end up building a PC and, uh, and making a video about it at the same time. So this time around we're doing another build. I have a very specific reason for it. My gaming rig as it is right now is an i5-4690K, which is a good rig, no doubt about it, but I recently upgraded to a 240Hz monitor, one of those ASUS ROG 240Hz uh, 1080p monitors, and my oh my, do I want to maintain as high a frame rate as possible. So, the i5 doesn't exactly cut it when trying to maintain the highest frame rate possible. Some games dip below 200, and I know you're thinking, what, 200 FPS, what? It actually, it, it makes a liquid experience. So, going above 144, I really do like it. So, my goal for this PC was two reasons. One, maintain it as high a frame rate as possible. And two, have a music production uh, computer built as well that's, on, that's for Windows. So, it knocks out two birds with one stone, really. The i5... You know, there's only four cores, and when you're doing music production, you really want as many cores as possible. Uh, and then the um, the i7 7700K is the best right now for actual frame rates when it comes to gaming. So high frame rates at 1080p, 7700K is hard to beat right now. So it's a it's a clear winner. So let's talk about what I got. So first things first, as you see, the core i7 7700K. Well, hello there, Governor. Oh wait, there. Nah. There we go. Come on, focus. There we go, it focused. Boom. Excellent. So that one right there, that's the, the CPU. Then we got some Corsair Vengeance LED RAM, a DDR4, 3000 megahertz. I will be overclocking this to, uh, I'm going to try to get to 5 gigahertz. I don't know if it's going to happen. We will see. And I'm also not doing water either. I decided to stay away from water this time around. Uh, my boot drive is going to be a 960 Pro M2 with 512 gigs. Mm, my goodness, this thing is going to be lightning fast for booting up. Uh, I went with a Corsair AX860 uh, power supply. It's got a platinum rating right there. Apparently, it is one of the most quiet uh, and efficient power supplies out there. So, happy about that. I've also went with the Maximus Hero 9 from Republic Gamers again, Asus ROG. Apparently this board is really good for overclocking, one of the best. So that was the reason I, I did a lot of research between the i7 uh, and also this board to talk about the best way to achieve a 5 gig. And apparently this board uh, has one of the, the best best abilities too. So that, I, that's why I went with this guy, with that chip, and uh, hopefully be able to get that performance I'm looking for. My cooler is a Noxua. NHD15. It is an air cooler, so uh, it's not not liquid, but as you can see right there. Well, let me get. Come on, come on. There we go. As you can see, that's what it looks like. It's got like a dual radiator type of thing, and then two fans. So I read a lot. A lot of people say they've gotten very successful at cooling the CPU and also having a quiet uh, sound as well. So this is one of the most quiet ones and the best overall cooling. Uh, abilities out there. Looking forward to that very much so. And then the case is a Corsair 570X crystal. It's got some LED type of things on the fans and all that. It's like, I think it's still mid range or um, mid sized case, but that's okay. I'm not looking for a huge amount in there. I just want enough space to make sure the cooler is going to be okay and also be able to put in um, my graphics card and all that action. Which, speaking of a graphics card, I'm going to be sticking with the 980 Ti. For now, all right, first things first, what we're going to do is open up the case. So let's throw this thing on the table here. The 570X crystal. It's like a beast. It does, yes, beast like indeed. Uh, it's always exciting building rigs because it's like Christmas, you know? <laughs> Obviously, you don't need to upgrade a computer every year, that's for sure. That's definitely not the case. The My previous gaming rig was nearly three years old and again it was a fourth gen i5 and with the way things are going and wanted to do music production on it can't wait I was, for that i was yeah exactly it's gonna be awesome doing music streams um i just realized that it was it was sooner or later and i was if it and if i ended up building a rig when destiny 2 is released then it's gonna be no time so it was gonna be difficult so this is the perfect time really all right uh so this is what the case is looking like so far you know Pull this thing out. I might actually need your help. <laughs> I think about it. Okay. Instructions. 
Those always come in handy. Uh, we got a couple yeah. packaging pieces right here. Okay. I'll make a mess. Yep, it's going to get messy up in here. All right there. Then, got this nice cloth. All in the name of PC. Ooh, all in the name of PC. Lord Gaben compels thee. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm. New case hype. She's very nice. She's very nice, yes. So, we got three fans right here. Mm -hmm. This is obviously plastic. You pull off the plastic. Um, three fans right here, and then obviously plenty of space right here for the board and all the peripherals. A little power supply action right there, and all the various case connections. Yeah. Oh, you got some nice dials right here as well. Uh, so we got lighting control right here. Obviously, headphone, speaker. Which, I mean, I never use those jacks. Then um, USB. Very nice. And these, they like, they just screw off like this to be able to take the plates off. Which is pretty nice, actually. I like how that's set up. So this is actually glass, which is a, a tempered glass, I should say. So I'm taking off the panels. I took out the back one already. Also got a bag of things that came with the case, which is cool. And there's like a there's a color control dial thing in the back too, which I have not had in one of these cases before, so that's new to me. But it's Corsair's cool stuff. So there we go. Mm -hmm. That comes off like so. Pretty nifty. Yeah, yeah. So here's where like the dial control type of stuff, uh, SP lighting, speed, color, mode, right there. And then this is where you plug the fans in. So there's room for three more to do these like LED color fan type of stuff, which uh, I don't want more fans. I don't want more noise. Three is already plenty. And the 980 Ti has a exhaust radiator, which I plan on putting like right here. So three coming in and then one exhaust right there. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. I am going to install the power supply first. Because it looks like it has a nice little cozy area that it fits into that might be kind of difficult to get to once other things are put in. So I figure let's do power supply first. Mm -hmm. Get that out of the way. And this is a nice power supply. Again, a platinum series is really good. It's rated for a long time. The noise factor is minimal. Something that I'm always concerned about when uh, when building a new rig. I don't want it noisy. I've had noisy computers before, and after a while, no matter how powerful they are, it just really annoys me. So, I've learned my lesson. Okay. It opens up, like so. And you got yourself a nice, beast old rig of a power supply. Beast old rig. <laughs> Beefy cable. These are going to be all the, the, the cables that hook up to it. So these are all your various power supply cables that, because it's modular, you can pick and choose which ones you want to use. So you don't, don't have like an insane amount of cables in there. That's good. Yeah, it's useful. And here it is. And voila. Voila. With some fancy bag. Little pouch. Yeah. Power supply pouch. Mm-hmm. Yes. The AX860. For all your power needs. Alright, so we got the power supply seated. We're now going to lock it in with some screws. Ended up using the wrong screws at first. Turns out these are the right ones. Can't use the wrong screw. Can't use the wrong screw. Oh my god. Dangerous. Okay, I think we're good here. This is nice and tight. Sure, yep, that's good. Nice and tight in there. And it looks like this is how you would plug certain peripherals in on this side if you want to get that in there. Okay, it's time for the motherboard. I just broke the seal on it. You break the seal, you know you're getting serious. Okay, so whenever you're handling electronics, you always want to make sure there's metal parts that are nearby that you can touch to ground yourself, essentially like mm -hmm. light switch type of screws, anything metal. You just want to discharge as much static electricity from your body as possible. A lot of people wear specific gloves and all that. Um, 
10, 20 years ago, it was much more of a problem. Electronics are a little bit different today, but still, you need to be as grounded as possible. Touch things, like if you're in a very staticky location, you gotta be even more careful. Um, but for the most part, as long as you pay attention to how much static electricity you have on you and you're touching and metal pieces and all that, then you should be okay. Uh, and you do it regularly. That's the big thing. Mm -hmm. So look at this, the Maximus 9 Hero. Oh, Maximus. Oh, Maximus, my god. Looks very nice. Ooh, baby. And then we got like this, is these stickers? Cool. Yeah, these are case badges, sticker type stuff. If you wanna throw that on there. I never put that stuff on my, my gear, but you know, if you want to, go right ahead. We've got, is this a, this is a coaster. <laughs> Put your drink on. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Sure. And then we have our actual manual with uh, a CD. I mean, okay. I have a CD drive somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, we got the manual. And it's probably in multiple languages. No, it's not actually. This is a nice big manual. Cool, there's actually quite a bit of info here. I'll probably have to consult this a few times throughout the build just to make sure I'm doing things correctly. Uh, let's see cable-wise what we got. So we got some SATA cables. These all SATAs? No, this is different. This is, I'm not sure what that is actually. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I think two SATA cables, yeah. They gave two SATA cables and then uh, looks like an extender cable of some sort. Let's keep that right there for now. Mm -hmm. And then over here we've got, we got the, the plate for the back of the computer. Nice. We'll be using that. This is, what is this? Oh, the SLI bridge. So if I have two 1080Ti's, I could SLI them with this bridge because the board does support that. Do I plan on doing that? Probably not. Oh, uh, we have another CPU kit thingy and then a jumper thing for Something specific that I'm not entirely sure about, but it's all good. All right, guys, we are going to seat the motherboard. Mm. We have to put this plate in as well. The plate will go like so. Mm -hmm. If you look on the side, essentially, it kind of lines that stuff up. So it's got a nice little guide. Well, hello there. Hello. Oh, hello. Is it me you're looking for? <laughs> okay, I'm just going to put this like so. Uh, drop this on in, not literally, figuratively. Make sure this is good. Gonna snap that in there. Yeah, this thing will snap in with like a certain amount of pressure. Okay guys, so I had to seat this first. It took a little bit of pressure. One of those things where you don't know if you're pushing too hard or type of thing, but then it popped in just perfect. So that's seated, and now my motherboard can actually sit in where it needs to sit. Awesome. So we're gonna put this like so. That's to obviously line up with that. And then, yeah, it actually has to compress against this. As you can see, this stuff has to be nice and snug for it to then sit in the screw areas. So I think that's looking pretty good actually. Yeah. All right, now I'm gonna screw in the screws for the motherboard. And we'll be good to go. Okay, we're almost done with the screws. We've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This will be eight we eight? put into the board. Also using a screwdriver that has a magnet at the tip. It helps quite a bit in case some things get screwy. Screwy? Get it? Oh my god. <laughs> Dad joke. <laughs> uh, so this is looking good. Just giving everything a quick little spin. You don't want to like too too tight. You don't want to loose at all. You can definitely don't want any room for movement. So now I'm gonna put in the boot drive, the 960 Pro M2 from Samsung. Very, very fast drive. 
I would have went with the Evo, but they were out of stock. Because for a boot drive, you don't really need the Pro. The Evo is just fine. It's still like three times faster than um, like the 850 ones. But this is what they had. I really didn't want to wait a couple weeks to get one in the mail or something like that. Look at that. Oh my god. Mm. Nice little chip. Hi nice. there, little chip. <laughs> How you doing there, buddy? Hey. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. This baby is going to seat right here like so. This one that came with the motherboard. These screws that I was like, I don't know what these screws do. They're actually the M2 screws. So they don't put them in the, in the motherboard just yet. They wait for you to install them in case you want them or not. We're going to install them. I actually have spots for two M2 drives, but I'm only using one right now. This first one. I'm going to use this. First one's gonna go right here. Like so. And you put the drive in, and then you clamp it down, or then you screw it in with the other screw that they give you. Like so, that's how you seat it. I'm also going to set this one as well. That way I have it in case I do put a, uh, another M2 drive in the future. Now I don't like have to figure out where it went. So this would go right here to this one right there. I'm going to seat that one in gently. Great. Now I have another small screwdriver like so. Let mm -hmm. that focus. There. I've got this small screwdriver that I'm going to use. Just put those screws in. And unfortunately it's not magnetized so I have to be pretty careful. get down here yeah so that one's secured now this one is gonna go like so like so. so you just insert it gently it goes down like that and it's gonna have a spring to it that's why you have to screw it down with a screw this one could get tricky Okay, we did it. Boot drive is installed. Nice. Mm. All right, nice. Good job now. That's right, nice. <laughs> now it's time to open the Core i7 chip. Memes, you have a i7 uh, 6700K from last year. Yes. Because we built your editing rig. Mm -hmm. So as they say, you play the silicon lottery and hope you get a really good chip that can overclock really well we will see if that's the case or not Ooh. oh my gosh all right so i removed the the little safety cover thing i'm going to take the cpu out so that baby looks like and basically we just set it on in right here gentle as possible okay and the way this looked they had this thing right here and you can see there's a triangle right there that says triangle yeah there you go you can see like the little triangle divot this is how it was set up and so that's where the triangle is right there as well for the the CPU you want to line those up that's how you know which way you have to put them in okay so this has to go down I believe it's got to go underneath here like so so it hooks underneath this thing and then you have to pull this thing back and put it underneath right there and then the CPU should be technically secured in there fingers crossed guys now we're gonna put the memory in because we're gonna do memory and then we're gonna go cooler once all that's in then we're actually getting really close to be set up, we just have to put on, uh, put all the power cables together. I see. And we'll be good to go for a test run. Here's my memory sticks. Uh, they these were on sale, and they were white LEDs, which I would have rather had red LEDs, but it is what it is. We'll roll with white for now. It was like I think forty more bucks <laughs> to get red ones. I was like, I'm okay. I can always swap yeah, out memory in the future. Yeah, exactly. So these are coming out. Vengeance LEDs. 
Good lord. Oh my god. So we're going to dual ram these babies. You would put it here and then here. That's how you do it. Oops. Come on. Come on, you stick of ram. There we go. Go like so. It makes a nice clicking noise once you put it in. Easy peasy. And then, lemon yep, lemon squeezy. You get this one. Like so. There we go. Memory is installed. Mm -hmm. That is easily one of the easiest things to do when it comes to building rigs. Also easy to upgrade too. You just put boom, boom, mm -hmm. more memory. All right, I'm gonna clear out some stuff here to get ready to put the, the cooler in. Now it's time for the cooler. This is a very important piece. If you don't install this correctly and you have a chip getting way too hot, then you can actually damage the chip or just prevent the, the, the system from being able to start. You definitely wanna make sure you do your cooler correctly. I have never used one of these coolers, so this will be a new experience for me. I'm always up for a new experience. This box is pretty meaty. So that's, yeah. <laughs> here's one of the fans. Let's see. Woo, look at that thing, it's mm. huge. Jeez. <laughs> it's also really silent apparently, which I'm all about, silent freaking fans. I think it's gonna go like so. Holy crap. I wonder if this is gonna fit actually. Okay, here's the radiator. Thing is massive. Whoa. I definitely have to do a check here to make sure this is gonna fit in the case. Right? This is something I didn't do, which <laughs> I should have done. Alright. Okay. So this is where the CPU touches mm -hmm. to distribute all of the, the heat. This is definitely interesting. It's a beast. It is a beast of a cooler. Tanky. Yeah. Alright, I do want to try to get both fans. That's going to do some serious heat distribution. Okay, so this is the, the brackets and stuff. This is for AMD right here. That's not what we're using. So we're going to set that aside. Common parts. Apparently things that are going to be used for both sides. Common parts. Common. And then I'm assuming this is going to be Intel right here. I think. Yeah, I'm assuming. Alright, so there's some instructions. There's a bracket that I'm pretty sure goes in the back. So I'm gonna set this stuff up and then show you guys once uh, some of it's set up. First things first on these, this case has an open back, like so. So I could easily put the back plate right here into the back of the motherboard, as you can see. So also you see these two dots right here and this thing right here? These are supposed to line up with the board. So you can easily put those in. So we go like so and like so, easy peasy right there. See that? Screw, screw, and screw. Supposed to line up like that. So once that back plate is in there, we then turn the computer around and we then install these plates onto that, like so. So first things first, we need we need these black rubbers. These um, what are they called? Spacers. Black spacers go in first, and then the the plates go in, and then these little little uh, bolts go in as well. Let's pull all these out. We're probably going to need all of them. So yeah, first these spacers. Mm -hmm. These things are first. So, let's actually just put them on right now. So spacer one, spacer two, spacer three, and spacer four. Okay, now that those are in there, we put these things like so. We set them like that. Then you take one of these screws and you start fastening, fastening it down. Yeah, like that. Hello, Joey. Joey, you Hi, like the Joey. new computer? Hi, <laughs> Joey. Build the new PC. He was sleeping behind my desk. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Now he's like saying like, what's up? What you guys up, doing? Man? What you doing? 
All right, so I just mounted the brackets, as you can see right there. That's how they are. There's a backplate already in there. Uh, I don't know actually if I'm going to keep it that way because I'm going to experiment on how the cooler is going to be adjusted. Mm -hmm. So I just want to show you guys that's what it looks like once those are installed. Okay guys, so as it turns out, the way I want to set up the cooler, I actually need the brackets like so. Like on the bottom, and, whoops, I need them on the, uh, the bottom and the top. So we are going to do that real quick. We adjusted the brackets, so they're vertical now. That way, yeah. this can go like so. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think it goes like this. I think about it. Like so. And it allows my RAM to fit because, the moment there, I thought my RAM was not going to be able to fit. Turns out I just had to turn it this way instead. I don't know if we're going to be able to get the other fan though. So it might just be a single fan unit setup. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is because this is definitely not going to be able to go right here. And I don't think it's going to be able to go right there either. So. Is that enough uh, cooling? Yeah, the single fan setup is good too, but like I said, this just, it wouldn't, Yeah. it'd have to be mounted some other way, I'm not exactly sure, but this is pointing that way, and I don't think this will fit right here, yeah, it doesn't go all the way down, hmm. so it's okay though, Okay. one final thing, you want to make sure you tighten these down, um, you don't want it loose because uh, it'll rattle, but you also don't want to over tighten it as well, so just just a snug fit, so it's not gonna have any problems. Okay, so now it's time for the thermal paste. We took the fan off from the heatsink, and we're going to put the thermal paste into this thing right here. Just a little, oh, that is actually too much. Okay, so we put a dot of thermal paste on the CPU. Now we're going to seat this baby onto the CPU itself. And goes like so. Let's make sure these things sit in there properly. I think that's that. Mm -hmm. I have to tighten these down. Turn them down until they stop, essentially. Okay, heat sink is attached. It's firm and secure, which is great. And we have to put the fan directly in there. Uh, hook up the fan into one of these ports over here. Yeah. And then uh, we're getting pretty close to done. We just have to hook up a bunch of power. And I think that's it. I'm not gonna put the graphics card in just yet. I'm gonna just set up the PC and have it go with the regular um, Intel graphics. That way I can make sure everything's working, overclock it, and not worry about putting in a GPU just yet. So I hooked up some case cables. Good to go. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to put in some power cables. We gotta put in power into the motherboard and also yeah, all kinds of stuff. There's two major power cables I have to do. And then there might be some other things, I'm not sure. Because the hard drive is already hooked up into the motherboard, we're looking pretty good, honestly. Oh, I, I have to hook in a SATA cable into the, the fan color control type of thing. This came with the, um, with the case itself, so we're going to do that. Alright, so I've got a PCIe cable. I'm going to hook this up because when I do plug in the graphics card, I'll need to plug in 8 pins total. Uh, or 16 pins, I guess, whatever it is. Uh, here's the CPU cable. That's got to go up to the top part of the uh, motherboard. And then here is the, the um, I don't know what it's called, but it's like the big connection, runs a lot of the board as well. So there's CPU power and then there's actual motherboard power right there. So that goes connected and then I'm also going to plug in a, um, a SATA cable to be able to hook up the, the fan colors and all that. Yeah. Okay, power cables are hooked up in the back as you can see. It's kind of hard to see because it's dark, but I got just the, the CPU, motherboard, uh, graphics card and another SATA cable hooked up in there. This is on the back side. Okay, I hooked up all the cables, guys. As you can see, motherboard cable, CPU cable is off in the corner right there. It's hard to see. Fast forward to the next day, guys. I have uh, loaded up Windows 10. Everything went really smooth. Really, really smooth. Uh, I was able to overclock the rig to 5 gigahertz as well with that air cooler. So. GG's right there. I haven't done an extensive test yet, so I need to see if uh, if real bench, I think it's called real bench. One of those like 
one of the fancy ones, not Prime 95, because I think Prime 95 can damage uh, CPUs, but real world testing, I need to make sure it's stable. So I still have to run one of those type of tests. But I did have a problem with the GTX 980 Ti. Let me show you guys. Okay, here is the rig, all put together with power on and everything. This is, that's that hard drive is from the old computer. I transferred a bunch of save files and all that. So as you can see, the 980 Ti is sitting right there, and these coils, or I mean these tubes, have to wrap around the actual radiator for the CPU and connect right there. This apparently is a no-no because aluminum can do weird things to materials, especially plastic and all that. So this is not a long-term ideal situation. And also this, it kind of sticks out. So putting the putting the actual case on or the, the front plate is going to compress this even further into that. So that's basically a no-go. I can't do that. I will say the computer is running beautifully and I'm really happy about that. So that is the only downside that's happening right now is that the this baby just it's not gonna work so i went out i bought a 1080 ti guys i did i got the uh strix asus strix uh 1080 ti so i'm gonna actually get put that into this machine and then it's officially a full-blown smoking 4k ready rig that is not even gonna do 4k because i'm gonna be running at 1080p hilarious right oh my gosh here's the asus strix it was actually an opened box so i got it for slightly cheaper than what it usually is which is, you know, it's whatever. Uh, the reason why I went with the Strix card is because apparently it's the most quiet and high performance possible card out there on air, not, uh, not water. So that's why I went with. There it is, the new 1080 Ti. Well, new-ish, since it is an open box. But yeah, as you can see, there's still some sticker stuff on here. Like that. Let's peel one of these off. Because I plan on keeping it unless this thing is broken for some reason. Which would suck, but that's why there is return policies. And thank goodness, Fred Electronics is right down the street from me. Okay, guys, it is installed. The 1080 Ti is in there. I put the glass case on there. You can see me, my vision <laughs> reflection. You can see all the lights in there at the moment as well. I still need to take off the, the plastic in the front right there, so I need to do that. But it's looking good, guys. I'm going to make sure all the drivers are good. And yeah, I installed that back fan right there as well. So, yeah, it's a sweet looking rig. Definitely digging it. Okay guys, it has been a couple weeks since I built this computer. And so far, so good. Uh, it's definitely been working exactly how I've wanted it. I haven't had any blue screens. Uh, well, actually I did have a blue screen when I overclocked it above uh, five gigahertz. Uh, so I had to dial that back down. I've actually decided to settle on 4.8. I was able to do 5.0. Uh, but I don't think I really need to go to 5.0 gigahertz on the overclock, so I decided to drop it back down to 4.8, which is still a great overclock. It's on air. Uh, again, I've been using it for the past couple weeks. I've had no errors whatsoever. Like I've been playing, uh, I've been playing Warframe, Borderlands, like Fortnite. I've been it's been excelling exceptionally, and I've had zero problems so far. So uh, I'd say solid build. Very happy with it. Um, no issues that I can think of at the moment. I am planning on putting another hard drive in there, so I can, um, uh, I, well, I need another drive for some music production in there, so that's uh, an upgrade that's coming in as well for the PC, but this is to finish off the vlog, because I actually don't remember where I left it off last time. I know I put a 1080 Ti and all in there. Again, it's been a couple weeks, so <laughs> this is to finish the vlog for the video so you guys can finally see the build. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much for watching guys. Really appreciate it. Hit the like button, sub to the channel, all that action. Check out the streams as well, twitch.tv forward slash teftytuft. That's where I spend most of my time these days making content. Uh, so yeah, thanks, thanks guys. I'll see you next time. Deuces.